Well, um, I think uh, my, my early uh, education, uh, uh, grade school was really important. The examples around me were really important. I had some really good teachers. Uh, when I was uh, in fifth grade, I started to play percussion uh, in, uh, in concert band in school. And uh, that was exciting for me because I hadn't been particularly good at other things at school. So finding something to have confidence in uh, was always a big thing for me. And um, I started playing piano when I must have been nine. My father brought a piano home. Uh, which is might sound like a big deal, but he was a construction worker and they couldn't pay him, so they paid him in an upright piano, which came in the front door and I started playing by ear. Then I took some lessons. Um, I went on to uh, get a nice scholarship uh, music school and I played percussion, uh, percussion major, uh, University of Miami. And uh, then I went out and, um, you know, made a terrible below the poverty line living for 10 years uh, doing odds and ends. Uh, and uh, then I got very lucky, uh, and songs that I wrote uh, started to, uh, you know, find a home. That would lead into the second half, entry into the music business. My first gig was uh, playing a church chicken dinner uh, when I was 10 years old playing songs that I had written, and I was paid dinner, so I considered myself a professional at that time. Well, the Sing Off, I think, was a really unique show um, because although there are other music competitions, uh, this one was driven by um, all vocals, a cappella singing, and there was no real safety net for the, uh, for the group. They all had one time through. It was live, and that was it. My job and the other judges, although at the beginning of the first season, we were supposed to do what the other judges did on other television shows, became quickly apparent that we needed to give these, mostly kids, but we needed to give these groups good, solid feedback. Now, you've done a, um, a performance one time on television. You have no idea what just happened to you. You know, some things were right and some things were wrong. My job was to tell them what they got right, um, tell them what I think that they were trying to do that they may have not gotten and, and, and what they might do in order to fix it. And my job, I felt like always, was to if they had had a second chance, the things that would have told them would have gotten them on track for the second one. That's what I would hope in a perfect world. Uh, usually for that show, my comments were uh, edited pretty aggressively. So I was doing a lot of talking about music and that for a network television show is not exactly the way you sell uh, ad time. Um, everyone won that way though because the kids heard what I had to say, take it or leave it. and. Uh, Well, I think for any musicians, vocalists or anybody, uh, as much technique uh, when, you're, when you're younger and learning as you can possibly cram into your brain and into your time. Um, because I think that learning technique and learning music theory, learning music history, composition, and, uh, and practicing your craft, uh, you'll never have that kind of time later. It makes you a little dumb for a moment when you learn so much at once. In other words, I think that when, when I was learning it anyway, uh, the more I learned, the more uh, sort of irrelevant my musicianship became as I, I started to uh, just regurgitate the things that I was learning and, and they weren't particularly musical. But the thing is, is if you have patience, um, not too long later, these things become part of your cellular makeup. And all those arpeggios, all the, all the vowel modification you've learned to get your voice through things, all these things uh, uh, happen as a professional later on. And uh, so I think as much as you can take before you're sick, completely sick of it. That's my advice to someone who's an aspiring. I, I think, you know, spend the time on your website. Who cares? Honestly, if you make really good music, if you tell your story and you're expressive with the kind of technique that you've learned as a kid, you'll find a place somewhere. And, and I think that's better, better time. I think that the music business has been uh, um, changing so much since I came into it. Uh, for all practical purposes, it's been in a uh, depression, I think, because 
um, technology um, didn't help the business this time. It's always helped the music business before. You had music videos, yay, sell records. CDs come along, yay, sell records. FM radio, selling records. All these different uh, synthesizers, great. Everything was fine until you could download it all free. And while I never took a stance against that, uh, and, and, and I really wouldn't because I think that um, if that's the way m music is available and if it makes people excited, then I'm okay with it. But I have to be realistic that it ruined the business as we know. So if you're coming up now, you're coming into a business that's nothing to do with the way that I made it personally. Uh, I think that music first is always the important thing. Always put your music first and your promotion secondly. You will meet, if you're out there gigging, you will meet people who are as talented as you are at their thing, which is figuring out how to get people to hear your music how, and how to actually extract money from them fairly uh, and nonviolently and to keep you on track um, as a career because, you know, a lot of us, I like to do something and then move on to the next thing. But, you know, I have good management. I have people that are like, you need to repeat yourself a little bit longer because everyone hasn't heard what you have to say. It's a hard discipline to learn as an artist when I've been playing some of my songs for 20 years now that I still play. Um, you know, used to drive me crazy, but um, I come to realize that, uh, that there is an art to reaching people with your music, and my art is going to be to find something fresh in it every time I play it. It's a cop-out for me to like say, I can't do it. So I think that's one place that management, uh, publicist, um, sometimes you need them, sometimes you don't. Um, it's complicated business. I mean, basically, uh, we artists now have to be aware of our business more than we did when I started. So. Um, it's, you know, it's just changing. I got a commission from uh, the Nashville Symphony Orchestra, the Nashville Ballet, and Minnesota Orchestra uh, to uh, compose uh, an instrumental piece. And so I decided to make it a piano concerto. And, um, you know, I, it's, it's the most incredibly intimidating blank page that you'll ever stare at uh, uh, writing a piece that's for a commission um, because I, I didn't know what I wanted to write about and I didn't have lyrics to do it with. So um, for me it was a matter of a lot of improvisation and playing, letting myself play for about a month to decide what things I wanted to hear um, the piano do with an orchestra at my gig. It'd be another thing if I was, you know, writing for another situation, it might be more like legacy or it might be, you know, something uh, more insane. Uh, but what I wanted in my show was something that made sense with the melodies that I write anyway. And so this, this concerto is very in line to me. It, it, it doesn't feel like a leap for me to play it. Um, I, I think that the, um, well, the, the business has changed in that we record differently now. Um, once, once I was in the business for a long time, I no longer could say I didn't know something. You know? So uh, our first hit song was called Brick. It was recorded on an upright piano, an upright bass, and a snare drum in a bedroom uh, on eight channels. Uh, that was taken to one of the biggest mixers in the, uh, in the era who looked down at the console and was like, you don't make a hit song with eight <laughs> channels. And he's just like, okay, how about this? And he puts it up and it all sounded the same. So we didn't know we couldn't do that. Uh, you know, later you learn the things that you can't do and you have to continue to, uh, to keep it fresh. Um, I also think that um, I try to do things that I've never done before so that I don't know what I'm doing, which is the reason I did the piano concerto. It was very organic to me. It was not any less organic than, than the way my early career was and that I was just fumbling through it. I think once you get things to a science and you go, okay, I, I've been patted on the back for this. You're great at that. You just were told that and you're paid a lot of money to do it. Now go do it again. I think that for me that's always uh, been not, that's not a mistake. Um, I always want to uh, 
go forward with something that's scary. I like doing something I've never done before that I may fail miserably on and just scrap. So my first band, we were piano, bass, and drums band. We recorded one or two takes live. We just did it. And uh, that's great. But later on, as you learn what you can do, it would be, it would be quite a, an inorganic policy for me to try to repeat that and do that again. So I'm glad those records are there, and I'm glad that I'm doing what I'm doing now, and I try to keep it scary.